I often think photos look the most majestic around golden hour, that's sunrise or sunset. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can really emphasize those warm golden tones found in your photo just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, when you want to add or just emphasize that golden hour look in your photo, I think there are three tools in Lightroom that really excel at that. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all three and how you can implement them to get this beautiful golden hour look. Now, this is the photo I'm gonna be using in today's video. And if you'd like to download it, go ahead to the link in the description. In fact, it's a photo I only just took last week on my latest POV. It was a sunset POV, which is where I've actually applied this look. So if you're interested in how I actually took this photo, go ahead and watch that video. But today, we're just focusing on editing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up the basics panel. And the very first tool is white balance. Now, most of the time on this uh, particular channel, I always talk about getting the correct white balance. But in certain cases like this one today, the correct white balance doesn't always mean it's the right white balance. Now, I did shoot this on auto white balance and I'd say it got it pretty good, but if we really want to emphasize those golden tones creatively, we actually want to warm this photo up. So it's not gonna look, or it's not gonna be right, as in it's not gonna be the accurate white balance for the scene. Creatively, we're actually warming it up slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my temperature slider here, I'm gonna warm it up by one entire thousand Kelvin. So uh, it was 5,500 Kelvin, now I'm gonna go to 6,500 Kelvin. And immediately, this photo just looks a little bit more warmer, a little bit more inviting to look at. And that's something I do to a lot of my images. I don't necessarily go for the correct or accurate white balance for the scene, although in some cases that is really important. Other times I might wanna go for a more of a cooler theme or a more of a warmer theme. And creatively, we can adjust that if that's something you need to. And as well with the temp slider, I'm actually gonna keep that the same. Sometimes you can end up with odd color casts, but in this particular example, it doesn't seem to have affected it. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna brighten this image up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna bring down some of those highlights because the sky is very bright in this photo. And it's the same situation with the shadows there. I might add in a little bit of clarity and also a little bit of dehaze. Again, I might brighten it up a little bit further, as well as I might go to the vibrance, add in a little bit of vibrance and also a little bit of, actually no, let's not add in saturation in this example. So just using the basics panel, already we've added a little bit more of a, a warmer look to it. But there's two more tools I wanna talk about. And these ones basically target the colors in the photo. Because yes, we've got nice, these nice warm tones, but the rest of the image is quite dark. So how can we manipulate those colors? Well, the second one I wanna to go to, we'll exit out the basics panel, is now going to be to color grading. Now, color grading is a super powerful tool when we want to add or emphasize a certain color to our photo because we can actually split it into shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, if you look at this image, the highlights are nice and warm. So what we can do is go to my highlight section. This is a highlight wheel here. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a warmer look. So I'm probably gonna add in a hue of around 35. And then with my saturation slider here, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And I'm probably gonna add it into around 20. But again, you can experiment depending on which uh, number works best for you. It might be lower or it might be higher, depending on the power of your warm tones. But where, there, where the magic really happens is going to be in the shadows. You can see the shadows are quite blue because again, they are in the shade. And naturally when you're shooting in the shade, there's gonna be less of those warmer tones. So what we can do is actually add in some warm tones using the shadow color wheel. So what we're gonna do is again, go for a nice warm hue. I'm probably gonna go for hue of 50 in this example. Again, it's depending on if you wanna go for a warmer or a cooler look or depending on the number that you select. And then I'm gonna go to the saturation here I'm gonna add that in. And you can see how it's impacting those shadows. Now, if you go too far, it just kind of ruins the photo. It almost looks sepia. So you do wanna be nice and subtle. I probably wouldn't go higher than 30. 25 or 30 is usually, I wouldn't go much higher. And in this particular example, I'm probably gonna go for around 20. So you already can see how much this photo has changed. If I do the before, and the after, those nice warm tones are really coming out. But there's still a little bit of blue that I'm not finding that appealing in this image. And that is where our last tool comes into play. And that is the color mixer tool. Now what's really nice about this is it affects our anatomy of our colors and it's split into hue, 
saturation and luminance. So we can mess around with the type of color, the amount of color, and then the brightness of that color independently. Now to get to that, what we could do is exit out the color grading panel and then go look to the one just above it. And that is the color mixer tool. And again, you've got hue, saturation, and luminance. Now I'm gonna leave hue in this example alone, although I probably would mess around with the yellows and oranges to bring out a bit more of that warmer tone. So there's some of those yellows there that I might make them a little bit more orange. But what we could do is jump over to the saturation. Now with saturation, it's split into eight color bands. And what I want to do, or this is what you wanna to do to emphasize those golden tones, is to add more emphasis to the reds, orange, and yellows, and less emphasis, so desaturate a lot of the cooler tones. And again, that will bring more attention to those warmer colors. So for example, let's just say if I do 15 in red, uh, 15 in orange, and 15 in yellow, but then the aquas, blues, purples, and magenta, we could say minus 25, and we'll do that for all or four of those uh, color bands. And you can see how it impacts. So if I do the before, and after, it's not a massive change, but if you go a little bit more extreme, you can really remove those colors. Now again, I like going for a little bit more of a subtler, a little bit more of a softer look, so I'd prefer something like this. But you can see, you can really and dramatically impact how your photo looks by messing around with the anatomy of colors. Now in this particular example, I might just do one more thing. I might actually go ahead and create two masks. So I might go ahead, create a linear gradient, just affect the shadows here. And then what I might do is just go to my exposure and bring that down. Again, bringing more emphasis to the warmer part of our photo by darkening those shadows. So I might go for uh, 0.75 of a stop. And then again, do the exact opposite, but for the highlights. So again, create new mask. This time I'm gonna go ahead and create radial gradient. I'm gonna create a gradient at the top here. I'm gonna go for something like so. Now I don't want to affect the rest of that post box. Now the post box is predominantly dark. So what I can do is subtract and then I'm gonna go down to where it says luminance range. I'm gonna go ahead and select those shadows. So now it's not affecting those shadows areas, which is perfect. And now what I'm gonna do is go to uh, my exposure here, bring that up a little bit. But I'm also can go to the temperature slider here and add a little bit more warmth there as well. I might go for around 20 in this example. And as you can see, those three tools plus the masking can dramatically impact how much of those warmer tones you have in your photo. And I can quickly show you the before and the after. And hopefully this has worked for your photo as well. And after a little bit more tweaking in the hue, saturation and luminance tool, here is the before and here is the final result. Thank you to all my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys want to support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys on Thursday.